Straight up, the multicam edit feature in DaVinci Resolve is ridiculous. You wanna edit four tracks at a time? You got it. How about eight? Go for it. 32? Don't care. As many until your computer explodes and burns into the sun? Whatever, bro, it's all good. You wanna edit rhythmically by pressing the number keys on your keyboard? You got it. Or how about you make like 100 cuts and you can grade the entire edit like this. And it's super easy to set up. Check this out. We're gonna select all our clips, right click, create new timeline using selected clips. We're gonna use sound because we don't have time code for this and boom, create. Just like that, it does everything for... Uh... But what do you do when it doesn't work? Hey guys, Nathan here. So today we're talking all about multicam editing and I'm gonna be real with y'all. This is my full-time job, editing, color correcting, that sort of thing, that's what I do full-time. And I've been working on this project that is just constant multicam edit after multicam edit after multicam edit. And I figured out some tips and tricks to solve some problems when things go wrong. Because at the end of the day, when you're doing it for a paycheck, you wanna learn the most efficient way to do things in the quickest time that you can, because time is money, right? So today, we're gonna go over some tips and tricks for setting up multicam clips in situations that you may be having some problems and just getting everything to work easy peasy. But before we get into that, be sure to hit like and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. I put out two Resolve tutorials a week and holy crap, we did it. Uh, we just hit a thousand subscribers, which is like, is just mind blowing for me. I started this channel with the idea of trying to produce the best tutorials I can and not put them behind a paywall. And it seems like you folks really like that. So I'm gonna keep doing it and I just, I can't thank you enough for helping this grow. But anyway, enough of me yammering on, let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and everything I'm gonna show today can be done in the free version of Resolve. Now let's start off by solving the problem we had in the beginning of the clip. So if we go through, try to select all these clips, right click and click create new multicam clip using selected clips. Now we have a few options here. Now if you have time code, great. Boom, use time code, done. It is rock solid and time code is like the best way to sync stuff up. But time code is a pretty pro level feature and this particular project we're working on is a little bit lower in budget, so we don't have time code. So what we're gonna have to be working with is sound. So it's analyzing the waveforms to find where the clips match up. So you can also name your multi-camera angles to pick from. Now, right off the gate, it starts with sequential, but we already have everything named here, A cam, B cam, cutaway one and two. So let's just go with the clip name and we want to move the source clips to original bins clip. You don't have to do this. I just find it tidies things up a little bit. So if we press create on that, we're gonna notice a problem. None of the match, basically. <laughs> it was not able to find a match for three clips and we have four clips. So by my calculations, it's found no matches. <laughs> so we can click OK on that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control Z on my keyboard to go back. I just wanna undo that action because clearly something was wrong. So let's analyze our clips. I'm gonna toss my headphones on because it's going by audio may help to listen to it. So let's check out our B cam. Okay, great, we're gonna check this oh, out. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, awesome, it's pretty straightforward. So we're gonna go check out the A cam here and I just take a listen. Now this is easier to notice for headphone users, but audio is only coming out of the right headphone. So that means we only have audio in the right channel. So that's gonna be a problem when Resolve is analyzing the waveforms to look for similarities. If it only sees audio in one channel, it's gonna assume, ah, oh, that doesn't match up with this other one that has audio in both channels. So that's a problem. Now I know that all these three clips were shot using the same camera. So we have to make adjustments to that. What we can do is we can right click. We're gonna go into clip attributes, and then we're gonna go into audio. We're gonna come down here to format, and we wanna change that to mono. Now by default, it goes with embedded channel one, which is the left audio channel, but we know that the audio is in our right channel. So we're gonna click in here, and we're gonna to go to embedded channel number two. Now, if we click on that, and we listen to, let's say our ACAM, we can see, 
it's coming out of both headphones, which is exactly what we want. So now when we select everything, right click, create new multicam clip using selected clips. We can then, we are going by sound, great clip name, everything's awesome. We then press create. So as we can see here, we have a bit of a problem. We've now got two clips that don't match and assuming two other clips that do match. So let's check out and see what's going on there. And we have our multicam sequence and we also have our original clips in here. So we'll go back and we'll drag our multicam onto our timeline. So if you just click on the multicam clip, you're not gonna see much. What we have to do is we have to get our dual viewer up. So I'm gonna make a bit of room by getting rid of our media pool effects library and even getting rid of the inspector. And now we have the ability for our dual viewer to pop up. So we have our preview viewer and then we can select what we want in the viewer on this side. So we're gonna go to multicam. Now we have all of our shots here and we can see if we play through that A cam and B cam are synced up, which is great. But what's the deal with cutaway one and two? So let's just zoom ahead here. Okay, where the heck is it? Well, let's right click and we're gonna go into open in timeline. So I just have it so the timelines kind of stack up here and the way you can get that is just by clicking this little doodad here. But if you don't wanna do that, that's fine too. You can also switch between the two at the bottom down here. Now, if we go into our multicam clip, we can see we have these two tracks on top of each other, but let's just hit Shift Z to expand to our full timeline. And if we zoom way out and go all the way to the end here, here they are, like 20 hours in, super weird. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this sucker all the way back to the beginning. Now we can kind of see what's going on. Let's make a little bit of space here. So let's give it a listen. Ah, can you see that? So the camera guy is moving around and he's kind of bumping the camera and the microphone a little bit and it's causing these clicks and these pops, which is probably throwing off the waveform detection and Resolve's going, hey, wait, that doesn't match these other clips. So it's not matching them up. So we're gonna have to do this manually. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use our ears and listen and kind of sync it up. So we have this moment at the beginning here where there's a little pluck of the strings, which I think we should be able to match up nicely. So if we just solo this clip that we're trying to match up and listen to it, perfect. That's the exact same moment. So we just have to sync the two together. So we see that blob here, this kind of blob in the waveform here. We can then see those little parts of the plucking is each one of those, and I bet you that's gonna be synced up. Yeah, you can even hear it in your audio that it's totally synced up and everything is good. So with Cutaway 2, what it was in this particular case is he accidentally turned the camera off and then needs to turn it back on again. So we'll be able to sync that up later down the line, but you kind of get the idea. So now if we go into our multicam test again. Let's just trim this thing down because for some reason, when it makes a mistake like that, it makes it super duper duper long and there's no reason we need it that long. So I'm just gonna hit control, shift, and bracket on my keyboard to make this thing a more reasonable size. So now if we check out our multicam clip, we can see that everything is synced up so we can make our cuts easily. I don't wanna change the music. I just wanna change the video file, so now, we can go through and make all these sorts of cuts, easy peasy, or I can press like one, two, three on my keyboard and boom, the cuts are right there. And if I wanna switch out a clip, I can just press Alt, click on another clip, and boom, easy peasy standard multicam stuff. But as is always the case with editing, there's more problems that you can encounter. Check it out. So we have these shots of a hand pan, which is a super cool instrument. We're gonna select everything, right click, new multicam clip, go with sound, clip name, everything is good there. It's gonna analyze, come up with a problem because one of the clips is from a different performance and that can cause some problems because humans are not robots and if we've got to do the same thing again, we may do it a little bit different. So here's how we solve that. So we're gonna drag our multicam down and we're gonna right click, open in timeline and check it out and see what's going on. So we have our another clip all the way over here. Let's bring this thing in 
and check it out. So I'm just gonna click up here and I'm gonna drag down my audio track size just because it's a little too chonky. So there we go. So this track, the ACAM track, is the problem right now. Now I see a moment that we could probably sync it up with. It looks like that little drum roll that he does in the beginning is probably right here too, which is great. So let's sync up the drum rolls and see what happens. That looks pretty much bang on, which, okay, it sounds pretty good, but you may notice a problem. In the B cam performance, he starts right away, but in the A cam performance, there's a bit of a pause. Now, we have a bit of an issue here. So, what we can do is we can line it up at certain points. So let's say we wanna line it up right after the drum roll. Well, that's great. And the song has lots of these little pauses in it, but the thing is, he's inconsistent with his pauses. So, if we look at the end, we can see that even though we've lined up at the beginning, the track doesn't end the same and just give it a listen. He's not in sync. It's, it kind of sounds a little cacophonic. If I take away that track, it sounds way more chill. So he's obviously getting out of time a little bit in those pauses and there's some easy ways to deal with that. So we're gonna go back to our multicam test. Now we're going to go into our multicam, view that sucker. We're on our ACAM audio, which is great in this situation because I know that's what the sound guy is gonna be using as his main track. So always try and cut to whatever your main track is gonna be when you get your final piece of audio that you can sync the scratch audio to. So let's say we're going ahead to the end of the song and we're on our ACAM and we wanna cut to our B cam. Then gonna play it out at the end. And you can see a bit of a problem here. Now he stops playing way before the final note actually comes. So what we can do to fix that up, we can press T to go into our trim tool. And the problem is he is stopping early, right? So let's watch it again. Yeah, he did his final hit way early. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our trim tool and we wanna drag it over a little bit. So let's maybe 20 frames. Let's see how that works. That was actually pretty good. I think we could go maybe a couple frames less. Perfect. And it's just that easy to make those little adjustments. But of course, it can always get more complicated if the timings don't line up. So check this out. So here we have this multicam video where everything's, you know, looking pretty good. It's a fun song. We have our scratch track muted and our final audio done by our sound guy, the magic sound wizard put in place. And Things are looking pretty good. The drums are synced up. Everything's great. What's the problem? Well, it's with this clip. So if you can see, he's actually way off time and there's a problem here. So let's go into our multicam clip. And again, this was another issue of the recording being done two different times and people are not robots. They're going to do their timings a little bit different each time unless they got a metronome in their head. So he's doing a pretty simple fill in the drum so it's easy to follow the audio to see what's going on. So he starts off in time, but the thing is, he's going a little bit slower on this track than he is on this track and we start to kind of fall off. You can see at the beginning that the audio is kind of close to lined up, but by the time we get to the end there, it's way off, right? This bead is in the middle of that and it's a problem. Now you can try and adjust either way, but if you want to use the whole clip, it's never going to perfectly line up. So here's what you got to do. Let's back up our clip a little bit and what we want to do is we want to extend it. And we're gonna extend it by changing the clip speed. So I'm gonna hit Control R on my keyboard to enter the re-time controls. And I just wanna drag this sucker out a little bit. Okay, so I'm just dragging it out so that I can see that the waveforms are lining up. Maybe a little bit slower. Boom, that's pretty darn close right there, I think. So let's see how that's looking. There, because the biggest part is we need that we need that cymbal crash at the end and then he pops right back into the song. So now we have everything lined up much better and we're just gonna maybe drag out this part just so it comes right onto there, great. Now things are looking much better. And then he goes straight back into the song and if you need to slow it down more, you could go into your inspector, your retime and scaling 
and change the retime process that you're using. But in this case, if we right click, check out our clip speed, we're at 97.84% of the normal speed. So it's pretty darn close to 100% playback. It's just a scooch slower. So you may notice the odd double frame, which you could definitely adjust with your retime process, but this is already a pretty long video. So we're not gonna get into that. But if you wanna check out more, link up top. And then if we go back into the actual song and we play it back, you can see it lines up much better. Now he ends with the hit of the symbol, which is perfect because it matches up better. So anyway, folks, there's some troubleshooting techniques when using the multicam feature inside of DaVinci Resolve. I hope that helps you with your projects and everything else you got going on. I got a ton more of this stuff to go through, so I'm gonna get back into it. But anyway, folks, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit like and all the things. Again, thank you so much for getting us to 1,000 subscribers absolutely crazy but yeah have yourself a good one okay bye